But for now, let us say hello to our first and only guest of the day. And I have to say, this is what it must feel like to uh, reunite with a loved one. My, my, my palms are extremely sweaty. Can you see, can you see the, the sweat glistening off my palms? The, the, the heart is beating. It feels like it's coming out of my throat. There's nerves. I have to go to the bathroom. It's all very, like, there's a lot of anxiety, but it's good kind of anxiety. You know what I mean? It's like the butterflies formation in your stomach because it's not often, my friends, it's not often that we get to reunite with a loved one on a special day like today. I mean, this is incredible stuff. And last year, around almost a year ago in this studio, uh, we reunited, uh, but it was short. It was rushed. And if I'm being honest, it wasn't really in the spirit of our program, which pretty much was the only light in this world during the dark days of the pandemic, because that show was always via Zoom and never in person. And so I thought it would be apropos in this holiday season, like a warm hug, like a nice tall glass of, of, of milk with some warm cookies right next to it to, uh, to reunite, to get the band back together. And so without further ado, let us say hello to my old friend, DC, who's on the, what? You're on, this is, uh, oh my God, this, this, this is worse than the car interview. You're on I'll the be, fucking I'll golf court. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I am addicted. This is how you're joining this, you. big, this big, this big interview. Listen, you're on wait, the golf wait. cart. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> DC, when I die, I, I want you there. to be and the I one to put me there. in the ground because you can let me down one last time. I, I mean, it's time. And I sat there and I heard you listening and talking about all this nonsense about magazines and yeah. all this. I mean, I don't even know what we're doing here at the MMA Hour. Like, I just sat uh, there. We're struggling. I'm just astonished. <laughs> hey, but listen to me. Listen to me. Ugh. I make the turn in one hole, and I'm I'm stopping. I am putting my game oh on hold to talk to you. This is hey, the worst hey, thing no, I have ever no, no. experienced. Ariel, Ariel, <laughs> let's say this. Let's say, let's say this. Ariel. Yes. I am putting my game on hold, and promise you. Oh my god! I am you putting got the glove my game too? on hold. I am. Yeah, I got the glove. Ugh. I am putting my game on hold to talk to you. And I am literally one under par through eight. Wow. Can we, can we watch? Can we watch you take the one, last shot? Dude, I am so good. I am, I, dude, I've gotten so good. Dare, dare I say? Yeah, yeah. Dare I say? <laughs> dare I say? Yes. I'm reaching tiger levels. Wow. Look at this guy. Yeah, I'm getting there. What good, course are I'm, we at? I'm what getting, course? I'm at, a, I'm at a course called Quarter Ball. Are you by yourself? North, Northern California. Oh, okay. You're not no, no, no. I'm with a couple of my friends. We're all playing. We're just trying to drive the cart here. It's yeah. beeping because we're just sliding backwards for some reason. Oh, my God. This you guy. Double check, double check. I mean, this Let's has go, to on. be. There we go. Let's go. This is worse hey, than you coming in and telling me that you I'm were short on time last year. This shot? Bro, I'm getting. I'm getting. Look, hey, look at you. want to see how beautiful it is out here? It looks fantastic. Look at this. I'm not going to lie. It looks Dude, tremendous. It is. I mean, it is stunning. Look at that. Wow. Where is this? Northern California? Gilroy? Yeah, dude, it's, it's literally Gilroy, baby. One of the most beautiful places the in the entire country. Garlic capital of the world. Shout out. Garlic capital, yeah. So what are you trying to say yeah, here? You're going to leave and come back? I have to keep talking about magazines I'm to kill time? I'm, no, no, I'm literally going to just quit for the next however long we're doing the interview. <laughs> I'm quitting. Wait, you said you have one more <laughs> shot. You have one more shot. Yeah, on the front nine. But I don't know that I can I can do any better than I've done to this point. I'm, Wait, I'm really one under. I'm one under. And by the way, you call it an interview. To me, this is a catch up with an old friend. But I guess to you, it's an interview. This yeah, is it's some, a catch up. Yeah. Well, you, you're saying. You, I mean, you told me yesterday. Yeah. You want to come on when you asked me on Monday. You said, "Would you come on my show to do an interview?" I was like, wait, we're doing interviews now? No, I didn't okay. say interview. I don't know if I use that word. If I'm being honest, I don't know. Those if I are use the words it. I can pull. Hey, listen, I can pull the text messages. You're good at that. Yeah. I'm good at that too. I'll pull the text. I will pull the text. Up. I will pull text messages up on you. I promise you. So, are we doing this from the golf cart? Is that what? It's giving me anxiety. This. No, 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 no. I'm actually going to. I'm actually going to find a way. Huh, how do I do this? Hey, you. Hold on. Could you drop me off at the clubhouse since you already hit? Tee off, please. Because these guys have to tee off and they can ride together. Let's go. So what? what, what no, is it's you? fine. It's, it's close. Man, I haven't seen you in so long. 
I don't recognize that uh, right, that white right, hair right. on the chin there. Hey, Man. let me ask you. Let me ask you this, Ariel. Yes, yes. You're Canadian. Hey, what's He's up? Canadian. What's He's happening? Olympic gold medalist. Wow. He's Olympic gold medalist, Stanley Cup champion. All this. What? What's what's your this name? This guy's Canadian. Dan. Oh, he can't hear me, right? Boyle. Dan Boyle. Oh, Dan. No, he can't hear Wait, me. Wait, did he? Dan Boyle. Did he play for the Tampa Bay Lightning? Did, did you play Tampa Bay Lightning? I had him on my fantasy <laughs> team. I had him on my fantasy team. Was his number three? Was his number three? He said he had you on his fantasy team where you're number three. Oh, God, no. It's 22. He was 22. number 22. Oh, ah, shit. Yeah, but I, did have, I did have him. Wow, look at you rolling yeah, with the Stanley Cup winners. Fantasy. Yeah, yeah, I'm rolling with the Stanley Cup champs out here. And I'm with the gold medal. Hey, listen. I didn't win the Olympics. I tried, yes. but he did. So by by kind of by like me and him being friends now, I won the Olympics. Does it work like that? No, absolutely. But this is what we're learning here is you have shed the extra weight, the losers like me, and now you're rolling with the big dogs, Olympic gold medalists, Stanley Cup no, champions, no, no. I, Super Bowl champions. I you, look at goes, you. Goes, I hardly now even recognize you. Weight. Area, don't be this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting close, right? We're getting close. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Close, right? Everything doing well? Everything I mean, how's life? I'm going, yeah, life's good, man. Life's good. You know, I'm hanging out with Dan Boyle and, yeah. and playing golf and, and in the middle of the day. Like, could it be any better? This is life. This is what you do now? I've earned it. No, of course. Man, I didn't say that. You've earned it. I've earned it. I've earned it. How often do you play golf? I play golf when I get a chance, right? Like, so if, if I'm working, if I'm working, the moment I'm done with, like, my meetings and stuff, I'll try to play golf. Or if I have a day off, like, so I go to Austin this week for the UFC fights, right? Yeah. I work fighter meetings from 9 till, like, 12. I have a tea time at 1. So I'll go play golf. And then on Friday, uh, I don't uh, I don't play golf because I have to do my my research. And then on Saturday morning, if the fights are if the fights are at night, like in, on the East Coast, I go in the morning and I play golf. Why do Why do you make that face when you said research? Because you know Dominic Cruz is always lurking. <laughs> <laughs> he's always lurking. If Dominic Cruz hears that I'm playing golf and I'm redoing my uh, research, he's, he's gonna, gonna get, get so me. upset. He's gonna yeah, get so mad. Government. All right, man. He's gonna get me. He's gonna get me. Where are we going now? I'm going to sit, bro. I'm going to sit where we're, we're going to sit and do our catch-up. Wow, this is great. Wow, what a guy. It's amazing. What a beautiful day time. there. What a beautiful day. Holy oh, God, smokes. Dude, California is the most beautiful place in the world. So all these guys moving. I'm like, I'm not leaving California. Okay, where y'all go? Wow, look at this guy. Right, oh, go, look. Is this better? He's made time for us. Can you take off the glove? I mean, it feels like someone who hangs out with you wearing their jacket. You know what I mean? It's like it feels like you're in a rush. <laughs> It also feels dangerous. Like a guy with a glove is like always kind of scary. Sure. I can make a joke right now about a guy with a glove, but I'm not going to make that joke. You know? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. I tried to get you to do it. Yeah, I, I know. I know. A couple of times. A couple of times. We can say whatever we want here, by the way. I don't know if you know this. No one can cancel really? us here. Yeah, yeah. We say whatever we want. Oh, you're so crazy. You can get canceled. No, not me. I'm uncancelable, DC. Anyone can get canceled, bro. You know what's crazy about us talking today? Talk to me. Well, the crazy thing is, is that uh, today is actually no. National <laughs> Throw Out Your Leftovers Day. So I saw this. No. I saw this. And I was like, I need to bring some leftovers back in my life. I need to bring some of that back. You know, everyone's throwing out their leftovers, but I need the leftovers back in my life. But in reality, uh, it's a great day because leftovers. it's National Lemon Cream Pie Day. Have you ever had a lemon cream pie? Yeah, I, I mean, come on, dude. Look at me. I've had every pie. <laughs> there is not a pie. There is not a pie in the world that I have not had. So, yeah, of course I've had lemon cream pie. It's yeah. also uh, National Rice Cake Day. I feel like you haven't had many of those. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the, what the, I'm telling him to try to give me rice cake. I slapped it out of his hand. Yeah. It's... When I was cutting the 205, he's like, here's some rice cake. And he's like, oh, but I can make it really good. I'll put almond butter on it. Cool. I'm like, yeah, that does not sound appealing. It's not good. It's terrible. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving? Good, bro. Really good. Yeah. Good food. Yeah, it was so good. You know what's so crazy Multiple about this? We day. haven't talked on the phone in so long. This would be our conversation on the phone, but I had to get you on to have this conversation. What a problem! What a problem is like you, you, you. 
I, I, you asked me to go in New York. Yeah. But I was no, really I want to bring that busy. up. I didn't want to bring that up. And then I didn't go. I didn't go. I didn't go. No, no. And then you kind of like, you 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 canceled. Me. Nah, nah. I just I needed <laughs> to give you some space. You blocked my phone uh, number. Nah. You blocked my phone number. No, nah, I gave you You blocked space. my phone number because I got green bubbles when I texted you. Nah. I got green bubbles when I texted you. <laughs> and then your location was off. What? And that's when I was like, wait a minute. So he's mad at me because for years, guys. He's giving me his location. No. Because, like, I'm his boss. You know? <laughs> so, like, his location was off. And I was, I was getting green bubbles. I was like, what is going on here? Never, never, never for you. Um, <laughs> there are a few things I wanted to ask you about, though. I've been dying to get your your your, your thoughts. Uh, CM Punk, you see that? Oh, my God. Oh. I texted him. <laughs> you texted, I texted him? him. I wow. Did, dude. What a I flex. Texted him. I said, dude, I said, what a freaking pop. He goes, I couldn't even hear my music. It was so loud. Wow. He said it was so loud in there. He couldn't even hear his music. It's, it's like this is the new WWE though, right? Like it don't matter how bad it ended. You, you can always go back. What's going so on my, with the phone? My, my thought. Well, I'm trying to get a way to make it like stay up to where I don't have to keep holding it. Yeah. That, yeah. So <laughs> my thought, and I always worry like, I always worry that it's going to be up my nose and I'll be like boogers. No, it's good. It's good. Okay. Okay. Let me go back. Let me go back. So my thought is, Royal Rumble, maybe Sasha Banks comes back. Nah, who cares? Or Naomi. Dude, remember they were tag team champs? Like, nah. Oh, I know why you don't care. Why? I why? 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 No, I just know why. I know <laughs> what? Oh, who cares? What, so, the, oh, uh, the so legit, CM Punk. Yeah, CM Punk is the man. He's the best in the world. The, the legit they, boss. I mean, what has she ever done? But these, yeah, she, she's won every championship. She's done everything. And right now, her name is like something Monet. Yeah, she's like rocking and rolling in Japan. Like she's the best. Like, what are you talking about? You don't care. Were you surprised that Punk came back? So, so the problem, the thing about wrestling today is like, the, you know, if you're on the internet at all, everybody's guessing. Yeah, it was in Chicago. So you thought if there was a time, maybe, but, you know, I liked it. But if you're Randy Orton, you're like, you're pissed off, right? I mean, Randy Orton comes out, muscles popping in. Oh, my boom, gosh. Boom, he's all... He looks incredible. <laughs> he, the freaking abs. He's he like, like a 10-pack. Yeah. I mean, he's like popping, big chest, big shoulders, big muscles. And then, look in my eyes. It's like, oh, Randy Orton's back. Let's put him back in the tag team with Matt Riddle. Oh, like, you know, now we're all talking about CM Punk, right? Um, Riddle's gone. I know, but I'm just saying, right? Like, that's what they were doing with Randy Orton yeah. before. Yeah. He came back. He's like important. Maybe he's the guy. He's big. He's strong. He could fight Roman Reigns. But then CM Punk comes back, and now it's like, yeah, well, Randy Orton. You know, it's like good, but it's like still like, come on. So, uh, no, so I'm CM Punk. Someone asked me, I don't know anything about wrestling. What would you compare this to in MMA terms? Punk coming back. What would it be like in MMA terms? I was like, maybe Randy Couture, but I don't know. Like, what? What could you equate it? It's so big. In terms of like, in terms of the breakup? In terms of like the holy shit, they made peace and he's back. Yeah. Tito Ortiz. Hmm. Tito Ortiz coming back. Tito Ortiz coming back. Because right, right now, like Tito Ortiz doesn't really come around at all. You right. know, I'm obviously at the UFC all the time. There's not much mention made of him. He was like one of the biggest stars in the early days. Obviously, That's CM Punk one. was much more new generation. But... Probably like a Tito Ortiz type of guy, a guy that left on bad terms, you know, or maybe you. <laughs> <laughs> what if in Toronto my music plays? Da -na, da -na, na -na, da -da. With the place going up, they'd be like, "Who the fuck is that guy?" Or maybe, maybe, <laughs> or maybe you actually. I'm not thinking about it. I'm thinking uh, Tito Ortiz. Maybe you coming back. Like that might be the. The thing, me know? and Dana taking the picture, mighty cold day oh, in hell, pointing at each could other. You my, uh, could uh, you imagine? Uh, that, that's actually what CM Punk going back in. Now that I think about it. Uh, <laughs> and, and would you have him beat Roman? CM Punk? Yeah. No, no. Cody Rose has to beat Roman Reigns. Finish still, the story? It still has to be Cody. Has to be Cody, yeah. And dude, I'm telling you, I was in WrestleMania last year. Yeah. And it was the best night because the bloodline was running so hot for so long, and then the Usos lost on Saturday. Yes. On Sunday, everybody, 70,000 walked into SoFi, ready for Cody to be. It was his coronation. They had the red card. He comes out. He kisses his child. He gives his belt to uh, 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 the guy from the Wyatt brothers, or the, the guy from the Wyatt family's kid, the one that passed away. Yeah, Luke, yeah. Luke Harper. I think his name is. Luke Harper. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. 
and, and I mean, I'm there the whole time just hoping he loses, right? Because I know how much is going to hurt these people because in their sadness, I find joy because uh, everybody thinks they know everything. Yes. I don't want to know wrestling to the point that I can't be surprised. I want to be surprised better. And dude, I was working for ESPN. I was doing the post fight show. And I knew that if he won, everybody would be so mad and so disappointed. So bro, as the match is going on, I go up to the set and I'm sitting with Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. And Cody hits the, the, the Cody coat. Oh, my God, Cody Cutter. He hits him with the Cody Cutter. Bam. The crowd goes crazy. Everybody's losing their mind. And then he does the one. I got, what's it called The uh, when he flips over with him, when he put their arm in his armpit? And he oh, hits yeah, his yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what it's called. He does his finishing move. And I go, oh, and so I'm sitting up there with all these people, and they're all excited. Seth Rollins, he kicks up. Seth goes, I can't think more than that. Than Roman, right? Because, you know, like they got a little bit of yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. thing, right? And he hits him with it again. Bang. That's going to take more than that. And so now you're on the edge of your seat. But you know, you know that just because Solo Sokoa has been banned from ringside, <laughs> there's a slight possibility he will come back. He comes back. Boom. Someone spiked to the side of the neck. But Roman retains and everybody leaves disappointed. So and they're just wallowing in their tears, leaving so far. 80,000 leaving just so disappointed. But I will say, it was the best decision because it was best for business no. because they're selling more merch. No. They're selling more merch than ever. They're selling out every arena. When Roman comes back, it feels like a big deal. It was the right decision. No, he doesn't and, even you know he doesn't even defend. He doesn't even show up. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Every time he comes back, it's much bigger. It was the right decision. To have both belts and they had to create another one. And that's okay because Seth Rollins has actually legitimized that belt. He has. It's so crazy that Roman's been away now and Seth has worked so hard to legitimize it. You don't feel like you're, you're watching a program with no champion. No, he's not. And then, and then my boy Gunther <laughs> is just so good. Gunther! That's my favorite. He's my favorite wrestler all the time. He's my favorite. He has surpassed the Macho Man. Wow, really? Even Seth? You love he, Seth. He, I love Seth. But the Gunter does all. I got in a fight a while back with Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks. Oh yeah, I remember. Because they were doing too many. They were doing too many flips. Yes. They were doing too many flips. Yes. I did. It, it it really pissed me off all the flips. Yes. So because they were doing all the flips, I was like, dude, what about a body slam and like yes. a splash or like a Gunter's move is a sleeper hole, a power bomb, and he does this splash off the top rope where he jumps off and just. It's awesome. Him and that, that big guy, his name is Bronson Reed. He's kind of fat. Yeah, yeah. He does a tsunami where he just drops his weight on people. Yo, his outfit is a little world. bit. He's got to change the, the outfit. Is not very appealing, right? I mean, who? That, who? Uh, Bronson. Who? He's like, it's too much. Love. It. You love that he outfit? Looks amazing. He's got. I think Nia Jack, him and Nia Jack, dude, what? I love <laughs> a fat wrestler. No, but the outfit. I think fat wrestlers are the best. <laughs> Don't care, bro. He looks amazing. I love fat wrestlers, bro. I it's love just, like big, burly, fat wrestlers. It's just not I kind of like Gunther like now, but I want I want him a little more fat. Yeah, like when he was fat before. When he was Walter, I like when he was fat. He just chops you, bow, and he chops you. Yeah, I like I like it. It's, it's been amazing to watch. I, I went to WrestleMania and I was all back in. Are you gonna Are you gonna do more with them? You did the one off. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm not gonna referee anymore. I'm not You're putting on. I'm not putting on. Ref I'm not wearing stripes again. It's over, bro. That was too much. Is there talks of you doing <laughs> more? Will you show up again? I haven't. I haven't. I haven't really spoken. They came to San Jose. They gave me and all my wrestling team tickets. So had, they gave us like forty tickets. Nick Khan oh, is the man. The man. Nick Khan is the absolute man. Gave us forty tickets. I took my whole wrestling academy there. The kids had a great time. It was uh, it was amazing. I, I I love the WWE. My boys are rocking now. The Creed brothers. Oh yeah, Julius, Julius. Creed. They're gonna win the tag title. Yeah, they're He's doing, great. It's, it's all good, man. It's all good. Okay, so I can I can almost hear. I, I'm not looking at the chat, but they're like, "You got DC on to talk about pro wrestling? Come on, we got to talk about something else." Even though I could are talk you to serious? you about this for like two hours, because uh, it's been so long yeah. since we spoke. It's been so long. Uh, can we talk a little bit of some stuff that we just talked about on the show? I maintain that it was a huge mistake to not give Tom Aspinall the undisputed title, that he should be the champ and he should be fighting. Right? Do you agree yeah, or disagree? Yeah. Well, you're stealing my take. What? Take? You're actually stealing my take. I've been saying That's this for my weeks. Take. That, is my, that is my take that I've said from the very moment. I said, I said that I believe that this fight before Sergey lost 
was for the undisputed title. Because if Jones and Stipe are only going to fight each other, then you cannot have Tom Aspinall then defend the interim championship. I feel like this. Because Jones and Stipe don't need the right. title to be on the line. Yes. They can just fight, and that's enough. Call it for the greatest of all time. It doesn't matter. Create a belt. Yes. It's like Tom Aspinall is the guy that's going to lead the heavyweight division for years to come. So, yes, I believe that he should be the undisputed champion. Hey, look, Jones is the undisputed champion. He earned that in the octagon by beating Cyril Gong. But if he's only going to fight Stipe, and that's not for another, I mean, what, six, eight months, seven Sorry. months? Yes. I think you put Tom, put Tom Aspinall as the champ, and I don't think anybody would bat an eyelid. Is, is anyone undisputed champion if they're not beating Francis Ngannou? Can you, so can that you actually... was my thought, right? So, 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 yes. So that was my thought, right? I would have loved to see him and Francis fight. Yes. And Francis was the undisputed champion. But then Francis left. Like, it's like you, you can only fight the people in front of you because if I say that Jones is not undisputed because he didn't beat Francis, how in the world could I ever call myself the champion of the world when I never beat Jones? Mm -hmm. And then if I'm not the champion of the world back then, I'm never the double champion. Because I never held the light heavyweight championship. And if I didn't hold the light heavyweight championship, I never would have got an opportunity to fight for the heavyweight championship. So it's just, you, you fight who's available. And it's last year, I think Alabama or Georgia won the, um, the NCAA football championship. They played TCU. Well, TCU's not the best team. They beat Ohio State. They were there. You beat who's in front of you. So yeah, Jones is the undisputed champ, even though he didn't fight in Ghana. Uh, but Francis left, you know? And I, 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 he did not make a mistake because he made all the money box. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, have you seen since the, the USADA news came out, Jones saying like, hey, I want my win back. I should have, that should have never been uh, no contest. Do you that see that? Crazy. Does that annoy you when you he see that? Or he, are you so far removed good. from all of that? I was just, well, I'm, I'm, I'm removed from it. But I just said we cannot recreate history now. We can't go back and say, I beat USADA. Like, it's not like <laughs> everything that happened. It's, like, it's just like, it's not like, well, it's just like, it's not like, it didn't happen. They're not saying, well, USADA was a wrong, was wrong. Anything that happened over the course of the time USADA was here is null and void. Still, the tr it's all still relevant to the time being. It's just they're not going to be the doping uh, uh, organization used anymore. That doesn't mean that everything that happened over the course of the time USADA was in effect uh, is null and void. Because then what? Michael Bisping was never the champ? Because Michael Bisping, if not for USADA, probably never would have won that belt. Because the moment Michael Bisping got to play on, on even terms, he beat everyone. Oh, wow. He I beat did. everyone. I thought you were implying that Weidman pulled out because of USADA. Okay. I see what you're saying. What do you mean? Well, because you said if, if if there's no USADA, is Michael Bisping the champ? You really, no, no. You, you really, no. Th you really I, think I think that? Michael Bisping... You think I he, do, dude. Like, really? Dude. Guys, guys were openly saying they were doing, uh, what was it at the time? TRT. TRT? Yeah. Was it TRT? Yeah. Yeah, they were openly saying it. Like, Vitor was say, openly saying it. And then when the USADA came, they got rid of all that. They got rid of it. No, I, I know. And so then Mike goes, But people, yeah, you know, the people are very smart, right? They could beat the system. Kung Lee. Hey, you remember Kung Lee? Yeah, yeah. Legend. Kung Lee was the man. TRT? Yeah. He was openly saying he was using TRT. That USADA came, Mike beats him, Mike earns a title fight, Mike becomes a champ. I'm telling you, bro, it really did level the playing field. But my point being, Ariel, yes. is that... Oh, it's so good to hear you say my name. My point being, it's not that he... USADA, USADA wasn't wrong. USADA just is not the, the, the testing organization used right. anymore. Amen. Uh, by the way... So yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, this to hear that, like... I beat Usada. No, you didn't beat Usada, bro. No, like no. none of us beat Usada. We just we all woke up at five o'clock in the morning when they were knocking on our doors. We all gave those tests for seven years, eight years, and now it's done. How how would you book UFC three hundred? I'm doing Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. Has to be right. Has I think you be. have to. Yeah, yeah, you have to. You have to. I'm doing Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler. I am doing if if the winner of the pay per view next week on two weeks, I think that champion will be on UFC 300, especially if it's Kobe Covington. 
you find a fight for Kobe Covington. If Kobe Covington wins, you find a fight for him. Okay. Uh, and then another title fight. I think you get three title fights. But then all those guys are booked in the first part of the year, right? I know, right? So I know. Like, this is where it gets tricky, left. right? It gets a little tricky, but I think you get three title fights. I don't think you get any returns. I don't think you get any of the big returns. You don't get, like, Brock coming back. No. Like, Islam, those types of things. Islam and, and Charles? I think Islam has to fight in Saudi Arabia. I think that just, to me, that makes sense. It just makes sense, like... Even on a non-pay-per-view? He's, Bro, I think when, like, think about this. Like, when the WWE goes yeah. to Saudi Arabia, it's always huge. They want the big guns. Right? They want big. I mean, in Saudi Arabia, sometimes they'd be after the dudes to go back and wrestle with them. Them the, dudes might be dead. Right. Like, this dude might, like, this, I, mean, I want this dude. Like, this dude's been dead for, like, 10 years, man. I thought maybe Abu they want Dhabi big. would not want him to fight there. Because, you know, there's, there's... Why would there be a difference? I mean, but dude, it's like... He has to fight in like it's in the Middle East, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I get it, but then you can. It's not like he can't fight in Abu Dhabi. Sure, sure, yeah. Still fight in Abu Dhabi. So you yeah. put you put him on Still the fight, fight night, huh? I would if I was doing it. They're I mean, paying, I don't know if they they're will. They're paying a shit ton of money anyway. Who cares? They're paying you a ton of money, regardless. Yeah, I don't know who else goes. And on. Hamza. If, and Hamza. If he's healthy. In Saudi Arabia, if he's healthy, I'm putting Hamza out there too. I'm rolling them dudes out there to fight, man. I'm going to blow up Saudi Arabia. I'm going to Saudi Arabia. You're going to be there? I'm going, man. Yeah, I'm going. What you mean am I going? Did I'm you going. see that scene in uh, in October? Can I tell you legends? why I'm going? Tell me. Can I tell me. you why I'm going? Why, why? His Excellency? They put... No, they, but they're opening a, uh, a WWE thing over there. A new thing. Did you see that? WWE when they were in there? No. They're opening a new WWE experience. I'm going to the new WWE yes. experience. You're the first one in the world. The first one in the world. That's going, why you're going? You know? They're going to bring back all the legends and stuff. Like, like, you know, did you see what they did for the, the Francis fight? Did you watch oh, that? God. Bringing out oh, all dude, the legends. It's it incredible. Bro, I watched, I watched the Francis fight and did a reaction video for my YouTube channel. Make sure you guys go yeah, check it out. check it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, I couldn't believe all the champs. And then I did a reaction video, and it was like 800,000 views, bro. It was just massive. Exploded. It was crazy how big it did during that weekend. But, dude, I was seeing some of the champs. Some of them dudes look bad, though. Some of the champs kind of beat up, man. You can tell the long career has taken a toll on them. Dudes on canes and stuff. But seeing Lennox Lewis out there, Van der Holyfield, Mike Tyson. And then it, it's it's crazy watching that because you watch all those big-time stars or at least people that we see as stars, and they're with Connor, and Connor might be the biggest star out of all of them. Oh, my God. It's crazy. I was going to ask, did they ask you to go? No, Why not? My, I'm not big enough. Come I'm not. I'm not, I'm not on that level. Dog. No, I'm not on that champ, level. Light heavyweight champ. Would, would you have gone listen, according, if they pay, if they paid hey, you a, a hey, million? Listen, if we're if we're using the if we're using the Tom Aspinall thing, I'm not the heavyweight champ or nah, the light heavyweight champ. Stop that. No. Stop that. They, would Would you have gone if they paid you big bucks? I don't even. I mean, I was home that weekend. It's you nice know, I like home. to work. So it's nice to be home. Yes, but but I probably would have stayed home. Man, did you see when I was on with Chael? He was so mean to me on the show. Did you see that? It was very mean. That was your. That was. That was. That, dude, that was kind of your fault. Like, a little bit. What are you Yo, talking? About? Yeah, yeah well, I don't know what y'all. I, I gotta be honest. With you. No, I. I gotta be honest. With you. I don't know what y'all were doing, man. <laughs> it was embarrassing and it was uncomfortable to watch. I turned it off. I couldn't watch it no more. I was like, this is bad. Like this is so bad. It was very. Like, mean you just going to antagonize Chael, and Chael's antagonizing you. I said, how does the friendship actually survive this? No, we're good. We're good. But I, if I'm being if I'm being completely honest, I was happy it happened. Why? Because he was on TV. And you guys were together every week like that. Like I was uh, like, oh, st- oh, so they're all such great friends, huh? Okay. Yeah. yeah we well, didn't get the fight. Look you at us. We never fight. We've never fought once. I don't know if that's true. Like that, where there's like veins popping. Not in like that. That was sweating bad. and shit. That was really you had bad. to get off. You had to get yeah, off because his voice, he lost his voice. <laughs> Bro, it got uncomfortable. Like, did you watch TV? It is like, this is really bad. I cannot watch this. It's can, like, it was really bad. Can you do me a favor? This weekend, when you're calling the fights, you're, you're going to be there in Austin. Great card, by the way. I really like I'm this card. Off. Oh, dude. Misha can Tate you on the prelims. That? Misha Tate on the prelims. Well, well, honestly, like, think about this. Like, it's been many years in a row where the the Stuart Scott fight like hell fight night is usually a big fight card. And that's exactly what's happening this weekend, right? It's Jimmy V week this week at ESPN. So uh, 
it's a it's a big week and a big fight card. I mean, Benil Daryush and Armand Saruki and Bobby Green and Jalen Turner. Uh, it's it, and it's gonna be sick. I can't wait. When you're calling the fights this weekend, just for me, for old times' sake, just throw it in there, just subtly. No one will know because no one's watching. Can you refer to uh, the fighter in there? Can you say Kelvin Gastelum? <laughs> 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 uh, do you do you even Kev- doing that? <laughs> do you what in the world are you doing, Gaston? <laughs> do you remember when he was doing that? Yes. I mean, talk about talk about listen, that was almost as that was almost as embarrassing as you and Chill fighting in front of everybody. Nah, nah. Kel- <laughs> just say, hey, I gotta tell you, Kevin. Kevin I'm like, hey, they, they send you the audio recording. Yeah. Hey, uh, could you Heidi 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 goes, can you say your name? And pronounce the syllable. It comes that Shimaya Shavkat Rahmanov. Right? Like this is he say it again. Kelvin Gastelum. Like what? Like that is not his name. And so they're never telling me he, he, he wanted. He said to call him. I said, I'm not calling him that. I said, his name is Kelvin Gastelum. We get to change the name seven years down the line, but Kelvin Gaston. What about Francis? What I'm about Francis? I'm seeing him this weekend. He's this weekend. Naganu. No. Francis Inganu. <laughs> Francis Inganu. Yeah, Francis. Francis Inganu. Yes. I was like, wow. Kamaru Dude, Usman also. Crazy. They said, they said, they said, say your name. Daniel Cormier. Listen, it slow down a little yeah. bit. I said, no. Because if I say it too fast, they're going to start saying all kind of crazy shit. Mess around, hey, I almost cussed. Hey, mess around on TV getting called Kaim, but like, what? Uh, no, but like, yes. Kaim, you, you fuck around, say your name, messed up, get called Kaim. By the way, you could cuss you, here, you, no problem. Really? Oh, yeah, we say shit, wow. all that stuff. Yeah, we're crazy this is here. Amazing. This is independent, how long? Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the you way, lost your mind. yesterday there was, a, there was a thing that came out MVP, Michael Van and Page versus Kevin Holland. Do you see this? Oh, that's a good one. I didn't see that. You didn't see that? Because Dana did an interview in that room of his. Have you ever been in that room, the war room, where they have all the stuff on I the have, wall? I have, I have. I did it. Yeah, I interviewed him there once. No, oh, it must be nice. must be real nice. Somebody actually put somebody actually put that up there again? Like, put up the, 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 the wall? Yes. If the, the full send guys. It was in the background. But, that happened with the pivot, too. Yes, you know, yes, pivot, yes, yes. Everyone's trying to break yeah, it down. See if it's tr- but who knows if it's real because it was filmed like a week or so ago. No, but that was a you fight. like that, MVP Kevin Holland? That would be a great fight. Oh, that would be so fun. That would be so fun if that's a, if that's a real fight. That's the type of fight you want MVP fighting if he's just coming to the UFC, too. You want him in there with somebody that's going to like go out there and kind of fight him in a way that's going to make for a fun fight. You know, Kel- you know Kevin Holland? You know, he uh, was Michael Chiesa his last fight when he submitted him. Yeah, yeah. Or he won again after that, right? Mm. Didn't he just win a fight recently, Kevin, Kevin Holland? You, you you work for the company. I mean, I do, but like, am I supposed to remember all this? <laughs> like, I can't remember everyone. <laughs> but I know he submitted Michael Chiesa. Uh, Jack, but Della. he also fought Steve. Lost Moore. to Jack Della. He fought, he fought Jack right. Della. He lost to Jack Della, right? In a very close fight. Oh yeah, but that weird one. It was on the Mexican guard. It was the only fight with no Mexicans. Oh, that was a great dude. That yeah. was a that was a that was a. Hey, let me tell you something. One of my favorite nights of fighting in in, in on the UFC calendar. You know? Really? No oh, che UFC. What are you talking about? It's only been bro, once. Bro, bro, been it's, bro. <laughs> dude, let me tell you something. It is one of my yes. favorite nights in UFC now. No che UFC dude. for the whole <laughs> night. The whole night. Mariachi music. Yeah. The whole night. The whole night. Now they're doing it, it at it the Sphere. Just, Next one. Oh, God. Dude, listen, listen. Let me get back to my okay, story. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't, don't be <laughs> me. Bro, the whole night, mariachi music. They had these cool jerseys. They were green oh, yeah, yeah. with the Mexican colors. And it said UFC, no, like Noche UFC. Bro, I'm trying to get a jersey. Because one, I, I, I need two. I want to give one to Kane, and I want one for uh, myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I live in Gilroy. I live in Gilroy, I think. It's going to be amazing. Was if that I just a snot rocket jersey. that you just did? Was that a snot rocket? I've rock? done it three times. Okay. I mean, it's the first time you <laughs> no, noticed. You went like that. I noticed the, the flick of the wrist. I went. <laughs> I, try, I usually try to do it off camera. I'm a caveman, bro. Uh, but I keep trying to get it, and I cannot get it. When they would refill the jerseys, 10 minutes, bang, before anybody can get up to get one, they're sold out. Jeez. Bro, the crowd was crazy, dude. It was amazing. And it, at the sphere, you see inside the sphere, like imagine if like coming outside, 
it's like a guy's like coming out and like you see like parts of Mexico or the guy he's sick. fighting and you see like parts of his country, right? Like, could you imagine like if not, 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 not just the flag. Imagine if you got a Mexican guy fight and you see like, you know, Mexico City. Yeah, yeah, no. Be and then cool. a Dagestani guy and you see the mountains of Dagestan. Oh my, could you imagine? Have you that been in be it? so cool, man. No, I haven't. I haven't been to this video yet. Uh, I haven't been to Vegas for a while, actually. Really? I went to Vegas to drive F1. That was the last time I, I was there. You drove? What are you talking about? You yeah. drove one of the cars? Well, it was a simulator. Oh, but that's sick. I drove F1. It was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Wait, Me, were... I played Cam Jordan. Mm. I played against uh, I played against an actual F1 driver that drove in the race the Saturday after, after we raced on the simulator. Look at you, just doing all kinds of promotional stuff. <laughs> Life is good, huh? I was in last place. I was in last place. <laughs> what kind of car is it? Because those are those. That's a tight fit. That car, no. But it's like a real car, right? It's like a real car. It's like the skeleton of the car. But we all fit in there. You fit in, okay? We all got in there. Well, Cam Jordan got in there. He's huge. I don't even know what that if is. He can fit. I can fit. Dude, he's one. Of, he's, I mean, only the best defensive end in the entire NFL. Who does he play for? Plays for the. To New Orleans Saints, uh, the on. Fighting Saints of New Orleans, come the on. Fighting no Saints of that. New Orleans, bunch of losers. Dude, you're so crazy. We're in first place. Are you really? Yeah, we're in first place in the NFC South. Are you who, crazy? Who's your starting quarterback, Jameis? No, dude, Derek, Derek Carr. <laughs> oh, Derek Carr. Derek Carr. Form yeah, Derek Carr. Formerly of the Raiders. We're in first place. Yeah, we're in first place. David's brother. Yeah, dude, his name is Derek Carr, bro. <laughs> Stop doing that. Okay, okay, wait. See, that's, this is why Chill, this is why Chill wanted to kick your ass. Uh, come you're like on. you're an agita- is, you're a bit of an agitator. This is this is by the way, this feels better than you being in studio because we were on Zoom. The birds were chirping. I thought you were going to be in that room with the birds chirping. You know what I mean? In the dark days, you know, you know. Can I tell you something? My, I was saying to my, I used to say to my wife in the early days of the pandemic, one day. When the book is written about the pandemic and ESPN and the pandemic, they are going to say Ariel Helwani carried this company on his back. That's what I used to say to her. <laughs> That's what I said. In the end, that didn't happen. I'm up. Clearly, I'm up. clearly, I'm no, 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 I'm no, no, no. I'm this is like I said this because she was like, "Why are you working so much? Why are you doing this?" I said, "I love this company. I'm going to carry it on my back." Okay. In the end, though, it was actually ended up being something greater than that because I get people till today who say. DC and Helwani was the bright spot in the pen. We did greater than carry the company. We, we, some might say we carried humanity. It was one of the great things. One of the great. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the greatest accomplishments of my of my career. No, spoken Remember? like a, spoken like a true narcissist. <laughs> we carried humanity. <laughs> Remember when we did the the radio show the week before, and I was wearing the gloves. I was wearing the green gloves. <laughs> <laughs> you made me so not nervous. even the mask. I didn't even have the mask. Well, you, dude, you probably you probably should have wore gloves with me because there was a guy on the plane that was coughing, man. Uh, when I was on the way to the pay per view, and that dude was like, "Yeah, I just got back from China." I was uh, like, "Wait, man!" Like you know, man. I was like, "You just you gotta just be messing with us." And he was just coughing. I was like, "Dude, come on, man!" I was like, "You can't be doing this, bro. Don't do this." You, the you, pandemic was just something. I always think about the pandemic. I'm like, "Wow, man, that was oh, what a time in in." It was always fun because we were just kind of living and we were all just at home. And then I would get on every Monday or Tuesday. What was uh, it, Monday? I doesn't even remember the day. Golly. Uh, Monday, Monday. And we would do the show and it was like an hour. And it was always just like fun to just let go because, man, it was a weird time. It was a very, very odd time. Stressful. And then you let the hair grow and we got to really see, you know, what was going on and up that there. That ball patch. You know yeah. what I mean? Do you remember? Yeah. And then I got ready for that fight in the middle of the pandemic. That was bad. That was bad. Do you regret that? Dude, it's it's literally one of my biggest regrets in the world. I feel like, and John Anik will tell me this all the time, and he goes, he goes, me as a broadcaster, he goes, calling your last fight in the Apex when it was like still really early in the pandemic and empty, he goes, it just felt kind of wrong. You know, to have a career like that and for it to end was, was uh, in that way was, yeah, it's like a bad, it's a bad, it's a, it's a regret. And as much as I wanted to win the belt back, um, I kind of wish that it was done in front of people. But I wouldn't have been able to wait till 21. Why not? In order to. I was too old, man. 
I was too old. And that's, and that's, that's one of my worries with Miocic, right? In the Jones fight is that he's already 41. Is he 41? Is he 40 yeah, and 41? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's a whole nother eight months. It's like, you're going to, you feel it when you start to get into your forties in terms of training, things start to slip. You're not as good as you were. You can't go to that next level. That was one of the things that I always could do. The only guy in the room, the training room, that could go to that next level with me was Kane. Mm. The only guy that can go to that next level with me in the octagon was Jones. I could always go to another level. And then when I got older, I could feel myself like I couldn't just take it to that next level anymore. My body wouldn't allow me. My mind would tell me to do it, but I just didn't have that gear anymore, that extra gear. So, so if it was up to you, would you have not taken that fight? Like, do you wish you just didn't take it and ended before that? Dude, I, I mean, if, if, you, if you're really talking about ending, it probably should have been after New York City when I beat Derek Lewis. Uh, yeah, yeah. That would have been the storybook, right? Because imagine how people would look at me if I retired with both of those championships. Oh, my God. But that doesn't even matter to me. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't really matter to me. But I'm talking, if you're asking me about what would have been fairy tale, I would have got what GSP got. Um, or, and nobody gets what GSP gets. Except for GSP and Olivia Obermercier. And uh, Amanda <laughs> Nunez, but bro, Olivia Ben Mercy it made a lot of money, bro. I like the guy; he's a really nice guy. But come on, what? you tripping? <laughs> what? <laughs> you tripping? What are you, you tripping, bro? You want back to back belts? On, what are you talking about, man? You tripping, man? Come on. Man. What do you think? On, what do you think about them acquiring? <laughs> come on. What do you come think on, about man. them? You know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Every time I come on this shit, man, he's not doing this, man. Like, well, on, you don't man. think that they're a, a co-leader? They said they're going to be a co-leader. I think they're good, man. I think these guys can fight. I think these guys can really fight. I think anybody fighting at the highest level can fight, man. But come on, man. You can't start talking about George St. Pierre and Olivia Obama. Mercy, amen. <laughs> <laughs> What do you what do you think about them? You got a way of making me just you be making me disrespect people, man. I, no, I have no, no intention to disrespect people. That's bad. That's bad, man. You say some stupid shit, and then I got to put you in your place and make it seem like I'm messing with Olivia over at Mercy. I saw you I talk to Kayla. I, I'm so happy for him. I like Kayla. Kayla, like she's, she's the real deal, huh? and she's Olympic champ. She's Olympic champ. She it's impossible to win the Olympic twice. It's like I know because I tried twice, and you can't. It's hard to win. It's impossible, actually. Him, her and Dan Boyle won the Olympic game. Uh, can she beat K- uh, Chris Cyborg? Mm, I think so. I mean, I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. How old is Chris Cyborg now? At some point, she's got to age. She's up there. She's up How there. old is Chris Cyborg? Exactly. Let me see right At here. some point, right? Like, so at some point, that's, that's, she's got to slow down. I don't know. But 38. I mean, it's it feels like hard. she's been around forever. She's only 38. Yeah, she has. But it feels it feels it's hard to judge that, right? Because you get these fighters and they get in front of cyborg. And if you have an Amanda Nunes who isn't afraid, she goes out there and she fights with the way that she did. But some of the other women that have been around as long as Chris has, they go out there and they're a bit starstruck and they're a bit nervous and they don't fight to their potential. Like Kaz Ngannou did not fight to her potential in that fight against her. And many of the women that fought her in the UFC when she was there, they just kind of get steamrolled because they allow for Chris's, uh, her legend precedes her. And so they don't fight her as effectively. That's not something that Kayla Harrison would do. So I think because of that, I think it would, it would allow for Kayla to fight more competitive and have a real chance of winning. So yeah, I believe she can compete with her. She won the Olympics, bro. Right. Twice. Like, come on, man. Yeah, twice. I would love to see it, but they said they're not even going to do it. Crazy, right? You have why, a, would they, why would they you, not you have, do you, it? You have a fight of that stature. You don't play with fire who, and book who, some... Who's it? Uh, Don Davis, who's the owner. You know that guy? That guy right there. That guy, he's the man. That guy's something else, man. He's the man. That guy's something else, man. <laughs> what? That guy just be talking. What? He just be talking and talking and talking. <laughs> I'm like, this dude, Don Davis, be talking. He just be talking and talking and talking. He be talking, huh? You don't he like just him? He be talking and you talking like and talking. Him? I mean, I don't really have any opinion of him. I'm just saying he be talking like, if he had any secrets, don't tell Don Davis <laughs> if you got secrets, because he's going to tell it. 
He just get talking and talking and What's talking. What's your beef with him? I don't have a beef with him. I'm just saying he be talking. He said they're going to be the co-leader. Everything. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you... I mean, I don't know how you could be the co-leader, bro. You're not yeah. going to be the co-leader. I'm sorry. There's, there's 20 the years. The UFC is the standard, bro. The UFC is the standard. They got too big... It's too big a head start. The fighters at the the level of fighters are just too high. It's they and it's it's a well oiled machine. I have gained, <clears throat> and people will say something like, "This guy's a company man." Uh, yes, they write yeah. me checks yes. a lot. Yes, <laughs> you should be. So, but like, but, but yes. But here's the deal: they have developed the UFC has developed a a product that is so far ahead of everything else. It's crazy, man. The from the production side to the personnel and staff side to the fighters. It's just, it's, it's not there's nothing close. that compares. It's not even close. It's not close, bro. And it's not going to be close. We, we've it's reached a point where it's, it's NFL and CFL and XFL. And I, I, don't, yes. I don't mean talent-wise. Really there's great fighters. Like MVP is going to come great over. great fighters everywhere. But it's just, it doesn't feel the same when you watch it. It's such a well-oiled machine. It's so big. Yeah. It's, anyone who says otherwise is a liar. Anyone who says otherwise. But it's, it's just not the truth. It's just, I got it. When I was in Strike Force in the beginning, I remember we would be on uh, CBS or all these, and I would just rush to find the ratings to see how it mm -hmm. did. Right? I had to know how it did because you wanted to feel like it was kind of catching up or like you were on that level because you knew back then UFC numbers were crazy. These pay per view numbers they were doing back then were crazy. And you were like, man, if if you if, if Strike Force can do five million views on cable, that's a big number. And it was not ever really that, right? It was not ever really that. But you always look for some sort of metric that puts you on the same level as the UFC. And they're just really there's not any, you know, from crowd attendance to gates to pay-per-views to it's, there's just not a metric that's going to show that um, you're on that level. I, I said at the beginning of the show, it's actually never been more. The gap has never been bigger. Like when 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 UFC bought Strike Force, they were requiring you and Luke and Alistair and Ronda and Nick and so on. Gilbert Melendez, all these guys, PFL, all these big time fighters. Yes, headliners. PFL is better now because they got Bellator, but it's not the same. They don't have the talent roster. I would say probably the two best guys are Johnny Eblen and Patchy Mix. I think Johnny Eblen could be a UFC champion next year. But I year. don't even think I don't even think they have I don't even think they have those weight classes. Well, that's the thing. They're just going to roll them in. But yes, that's that's <laughs> part of the reason why they bought it because their roster is a little too thin. But you agree, Johnny Eblen? Uh, I think of their champions. I think he might him and I think, him Usman I think, I and think, Patchy might be the three best. I think Bellator. I think Bellator is uh, – they had their best group of champions. Yes. With Patchy Usman, who is a monster. Usman's a monster, bro. Uh, Johnny Eblen. And I was very surprised that the 170-pounder lost because that dude is good. Yeah. I'm, I'm a soft. Soft. Yeah. He's really good. And then the 205 pound is real good. Vadim. He's just small. Nemkov. Yeah. He's really good. But he's probably like an 85-pounder in reality, right? But like – they're, they have their best group of champions, but it didn't feel like the guys fighting behind them were as good. But in terms of champions, I think Bellator had their best group of champions they've had in a really long time. You know what's my biggest regret? Really long time. My biggest regret? We what? never got to see you versus Ryan Bader. I want the easiest fight really? in the division. Yeah. Give me Ryan Bader. Yeah, Ryan Bader, is UFC, he's, he's Bellator champ right now. He comes over to UFC. He's UFC heavyweight champ. Easy. You... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking? He hasn't lost at heavyweight. He's killing everyone. Hey, hey, bro, you're trolling, bro. You're trolling. Nah, nah, nah. You're trolling. What are you talking? Yeah, you're trolling. You don't bro. think it's been incredible you're what trolling. he's done? So you think Ryan Bader could beat Tom Aspinall? Oh, my God. Don't make me talk bad about Aspinall. You just said. I mean, he's great. He, well, he I, what? No, no. He's, he's You actually think Ryan Bader could beat Tom Aspinall? No, but he's the interim champ. So I was talking about the other belt. So then Ryan Bader could be John Jones. I think John Jones choked him out of there. Yeah, that was 2011. That was 2011. That was a long ass time. So ago. he's gotten older. He's gotten older. You're not he's impressed with what Ryan Bader is doing with these heavyweights. I think Ryan Bader is doing really good, but it's like, man, let's live in reality, Eric. We got to live in reality, man. Like, this dude is good, man. But like, 
he came to the UFC, he'd be good. He would still be one of the better heavyweights in the world, but he's not the best heavyweight in the world. The best heavyweight in the world, the best heavyweight in the world is between uh, John Jones, Tom Aspinall, Steve Miocic, or Francis Ngannou. Those are the four best heavyweights in the world, hands down. Those are. You can't really put Steve. The that rest of the guys. The rest of the guys are working towards that. Jailton Almeida is on is on the Jailton Almeida would be the Bellator champion mm-hmm. right now. He'd be the PFL champion too, Jailton. But but I don't know if Jailton right now beats uh, John Jones or Tom Aspinall, right? I just so it's like those guys are on their way up to that level. But yeah, you, you can't say that, dude. You got to be trolling, man. What do you think about Sean Strickland? You, you like trolling. this guy? I think Sean Strickland is is is. I think he's hilarious, <laughs> and I think Sean Strickland is as honest as any human being you'll ever meet in your entire life. It's you love him or you hate him, but somebody everybody has an opinion of Sean Strickland, and what he did to Izzy was so impressive. I could not believe what I was watching. Couldn't believe. it. Do you see that video of him outside his house on Monday? Yeah. Yeah. That's some crazy shit. That. That's crazy. How does that happen to Sean Strickland? Mm-hmm. I feel like that was his like Super Bowl right there. That's like the greatest thing to happen to him. It's like it, Sean Strickland, one of them dudes that like sit outside his house. Like, I wish somebody would try to rob yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I he's like hoping someone tries to rob him so that he can do that to him. That's why you gotta you can't rob people, man. You rob people, you never know who port you end up on. It was like that guy that tried to break into Anthony Smith's house. Oh, that was crazy. Him up. You remember that? That was during like, that was during our show. Yeah, yeah. In the early days yeah, of the pandemic. Crazy. Like you end up breaking into the wrong guy's house and next thing you know, you're just getting your butt kicked. Okay, let it's me crazy. ask you a couple more and then I'll let you go because I'm feeling you're looking all over the place. Right. I'm getting nervous. Um Aljo 145. You like this? I think he should stay at 135. Really? Why? I think that's the right weight class for him. Yeah, I just think it's the right weight class for him. Look, man, I, I People switch weights when you're looking for a change because you're not finding success or you can't make the weight anymore. No matter how tough it is, he was still making the weight. He still makes the weight. So I think he should stay at 135. What do you watch? Those guys are big. He's a bit he's a bit of a tweener, kind of. What am I watching? No, no. Well, he 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 wants uh Max Holloway. Too big, right? I think Max is too big. Yeah. But there's really nothing left for him at 35, so might as well kind of go for something different. I don't hate it. I just think that I just think that he has a, I think that he has a good chance of winning enough fights to get it work his way back to a title fight. Hmm. I really do. Interesting. I think he has a better chance, 135, winning enough fights to where he's undeniable again. Because that's what happens, right? Like a lot of times, guys that win, 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 and they don't get the title fight right away, at some point it becomes undeniable that they should be fighting for the belt. And so they get their opportunity and they become champion. Leon Edwards fought 11 times before he got a title fight. Now he's the champ. So it's like, sometimes it, it sometimes it's faster than other times. Max Holloway won 12 before mm-hmm. he became the champ. So it's like, at a point you become undeniable, and I think Aljo can do that at 135. What do you think your boy DP should do? He's kind of stuck. I think Dustin Poirier should kind of wait. Wait. Dustin Poirier should hope Armin Sarukian doesn't do well this weekend, first and foremost. Because mm. if Benil Daryush wins, now you go, hey, I want to fight Benil. And if I beat Benil, it gets you a fight at possibly UF 300, UFC 300 like he wants. And then it puts him in line to where when Islam is ready for that third fight next year, he could be that third fight waiting for him in October. Interesting. Okay. All right, because it feels like there's no real guy that makes total sense for him. Uh, were you trolling when Alex Pereira kicked you in the leg? You, that didn't really hurt, right? It hurts, bro. Come on. It you're actually, Daniel Cormier. No, it, it, you're it, Daniel Cormier. Listen, listen to me. It didn't hurt to the point that I was going to fall down on the first one. But he wasn't kicking me hard. But I could feel like he was putting it in a place on my leg where I could feel like, well, if this guy kicked me here multiple times, I would be very, very... Uh, limited in my movement right so it really felt like he was like it was giving me like this weird delayed reaction wow. on my calf it was a very odd uh kick that he does um and he, he hey he stopped rolling the camera and showed me some things that he's doing that's not just him kicking wow yeah it's crazy uh let me ask you uh, what are you watching these days 
On TV, you mean? Yeah. Beverly Hillbillies what? series, shows. What do you got? No, I'm off of that. I'm off of that. I'm off of Beverly Hillbillies. All right. So there's a couple things. One, I don't really like to do this much anymore because uh, they don't pay me. Oh. But uh, I uh, I like I like Welcome to Wrexham. Have you watched that? Oh, it's great. You watched it's that? The soccer club. Wow, I'm shocked. I watch, dude, I'm all in. I'm all in the soccer now. I started playing FC 24. What? And now I'm like a huge soccer fan, bro. I'm a huge soccer what? fan. Now. Wow, we have so much I in love common. Soccer. I love soccer. You watch games too? Uh, no. Okay. I don't watch right. the game. The highlights. Okay. I watch the highlights. All right. What's your team? I watch the highlights. What's your team? Bayern. I Bayern. like Bayern. Wow, Harry Kane. Yeah, I like the slick. I like the slick haired Englishman, Harry oh, Kane. Oh my God, this yeah, is incredible! I, I like, yeah. This is a huge yeah, so I watch, development. I, I watch. I watch soccer. Okay. I watch. Uh, so I watch. Welcome to Wrexham. It's over now. Though. It just got done with the second season. Yeah. I watch. Uh, there's a show called. Uh, it's called. It's called. Um, Legacy of the Monarchs. I think just started on Apple TV. So I'm watching that. It's pretty good. It's about all the monarchs, like Godzilla, King Kong, okay. and all those. It's a cool show. Uh, I watch uh, Beckham. I got, no, sorry. Oh. Messi meets America. Oh, yeah. Wow, which look is at cool. you. You're really into soccer. That's a cool one. Yeah. I like soccer. I watch a lot of golf. Dude, I was up. I was up on golf. Seriously. On uh, the Ryder Cup. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would go to bed in the middle of the afternoon to wake up at night and stay up all night to watch it live. That is insane. It's yeah, so, so boring. I like golf. No, it's not, actually. It's, it's not. really good. You watch Full Swing? And then listen to this. I do watch Full Swing. But then listen to this. I'm actually, after the Ryder Cup, the week after, I go down to Florida. I go to uh, the Grove 23, Michael Jordan's private golf course. Wow. I walk in and I see Rory McIlroy. Wow. Right? So Rory McIlroy almost got into a fight with this caddy at the Ryder Cup. And so I saw him, but like they have all, they got like these rules, pitch, don't take pictures of the, guests, of the members and stuff. So I walk past him kind of like, I'm not going to say anything. But then he double takes and he goes, DC, what are you doing here? Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. So then we start talking. And he's there with the whole Ryder Cup team. Wow. And we start making jokes about the fight on the course and how Rory should take some classes with me and all this other stuff. Yeah, it was it was, it was cool. Rory right back, back, Rory knows I've you really, Bro, I've really learned, I've learned that since we do this and more television, uh, uh, I'm more recognizable to the, the general person than I was before. Well, so which, ESPN. You know, hats off. Hats off the ESPN. That's hey. right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, son of a gun. He's a company man. That's he's right. He's a company man. Is your hand still like chub? Is it still like, do you still like move it like that? Remember when it used to just always stay straight? Yes, yes. What was that? <laughs> what was that? Is it still like that? I was like, I don't, I mean, I did, I've never thought about it because I don't have a friend that makes fun of me constantly about it. Do you, can you but make like, a fist? I've never, yeah, I can make a fist. Okay. What are you talking about? All I can't right. make a fist. <laughs> Dude, you're such a bully. What? This is so great. I want to. Just one second. Let me. I just want to. I'm trying to hug you here. <laughs> Where are you? I'm hugging you. Can't I'm see. hugging the screen. Oh. You can't see. There you go. My hands are open. My Look God. Man, my hands are this has been so great. My hands are open. Look at my hands. Uh, Look at my hands. Oh, my God. How long have I been, how long have I been on this? Uh, like 50 minutes. 50 minutes? It flew by in a second. Bro, I've done 50 Come on, minutes. You gotta get the band I back mean, how together. many holes? I see. You, your show's great with RC. Played. Shout out to RC. It is good. It is good. Like RC's the man. Ben Askren. Hey, shout RC's out to Funky. Yes, uh, yes. Your family. Volume to volume sports. But it's never the same. It'll never be the same. No, right? yeah. uh, come on. Let's, hey, but you got. Come hey, on. Let me tell you something, bro. It's been great, bro. It's been, it it's been, been great. Nice. Yeah, I do miss you, though. I miss you, You don't even text me no more. Let me tell you something. It really is very telling. It's really very telling when a guy loses communication with you. And then you go, well, this guy might not be as good a friend to me uh, as he pretends to it. be. It hurts too much. It's like a bad breakup. I can't. You just want to keep me in the friend zone, and I, it, I love you hi. too much. I love you too. Here you want to say hi? Say hi. Hello. All right, look at this. Say hey. hi. Hey, what's we're happening? Getting done, we're getting done. Yeah. yeah, she brought me water. Okay. She all goes, right. this dude's been talking for an hour. He might need some water. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. What a sweetheart. Anyway, thank you for doing this. You're a man, much bro. Much love. I appreciate it. Keep it up. It was fun. You know, bro. I always love you. And don't be a stranger. 
And good luck. What, what, what? What? It's too much. <laughs> too much. You're doing too much. Uh, uh, You're doing too much. Good luck in uh, Austin. You're going to Austin? Cannot wait, bro. It's going to be great. Great fight night. Great cause. All night, there's be a QR code on the screen. Oh, nice. Get that QR code. Yeah, yeah, donate, man. Cancer research is awesome. All right, and check out the YouTube night. channel. I'll see you soon, my friend. Yeah. And by the way, there still got it. You. Still got Yo, it there. Still got bro, it. Bro, I saw. Hey. I watched your show yeah. two weeks ago, and I didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. Hey, let me know when my picture goes up on your set. All right. I'm waiting. Two plus <laughs> years. Let me know. All right. Shut up, man. Yeah, all right, Ariel. There hey, it is. Bye. DC. Bye bye. 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 Can I tell you guys something? Like truly. Well, well, and you knew it was coming, right? When I turned to the screen and the shot was him in the golf cart, it was like yes. my, my heart went yeah. down to oh, my yeah. ankles. You knew I, it was I coming, right? Actually, when we were talking about the magazines finishing up, I you know you saw it. It's, it's plastered everywhere. DC just driving around in a golf cart. I was like, oh god, this is uh, this is not what I was expecting. No, because I said to him like, do you have a heart out? Are you busy? Is your schedule clear? X, Y, and Z, right? No, nah, man, it's all about you and I. It's all about you. Love and of me. the game, man. Love of the game, huh? And then so there's something it gives me anxiety because I feel like the person's on the move. It's like you know, like when you you're you're meeting with someone and they keep their coat on. You feel like they're you feel like they're 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 ready to go. Like it's not comfortable. It, it feels like they're in transit. On the golf, have we ever had someone on uh, a golf course before? I feel like we might have had someone on a golf course before. Uh, didn't Michael Chandler join from from the club? Yes, a similar setup. But look, Chandler was there sitting; he was ready to go. I interviewed John Barry from a, a golf uh, clubhouse. Right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. You never golf before, eh? I've done it like maybe twice. I've done a I've done a bunch of um, mini golf, but um, not much of a actual. I find it. Why are you a good golfer? Uh, I'm decent. Love golfing. I mean, it's very hard. It seems like a fun time. It's very communal. It's uh, see that course too. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Gorgeous. I didn't know about this Grove Twenty Three thing. Did you yeah, know about I mean, that? It's like the elite of the elite. You have to pay to play there, or you just have to be someone famous. I was gonna say, I think you have to get an invitation to play there. Okay. Um, well, that was fun. I, I, I definitely uh, miss doing the show with him. Uh, miss having him in my life. Uh, him and Chill. It was a great run there. And uh, great to catch up with Daniel Cormier. Do check out his uh, YouTube channel and uh, check out uh, DC and RC on the uh, ESPN MMA YouTube channel as well. Uh, you know what's, uh, what's, what's funny is that, and I think I may have told this story before, the week before the pandemic, we did that ESPN radio show and it was supposed to be, the deal was supposed to be, you know, Every Thursday before every UFC pay-per-view, we would do a preview show on ESPN Radio. So we did the one right before Izzy Romero, and then the world shuts down less than a week later, six days later, and then we're scratching our head wondering, all right, well, how are we going to keep doing the show? And I was like, well, we have DC here. Why don't we just do that every Monday? And thus it was born. Crazy, crazy times. We kept doing the, uh, the, uh, the radio shows, and my favorite part about it was I, I didn't have to book any guests. It was fantastic. And the people liked it as well. Uh, and there, there was a period there of like two months where there were no fights. There were literally no fights, but we were able to keep going because there was all these rumors about, you know, are they going to go to some island? Are they going to go here? Are they going to go there? Is Vladimir Putin going to fly Khabib over to some place? Is he going to let him go here? Or there? I mean, it was just an absolute crazy time. A crazy time. I never want to go back to that time. While there is some nostalgia and good feelings, it was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was not that great. It was, uh, it was pretty damn miserable, uh, just because we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't do anything. And if you're a germaphobe like me, uh, it wasn't that much fun, but we have survived and we're all good. Thank God.